Hi, how's it going? My name's Gunner, and I just wanted to thank you for joining me today as I discuss where my ideas for paintings come from. Um, there's three approaches to the way I work artistically. So one of them is kind of this free flow um, drawing where I just start drawing and whatever comes out, comes out. The second one is this idea of hybrid um, characters or hybrid um, scenes, which is I'm taking elements of various from different places and combining them into a format that maybe hasn't been seen before. Um, so, for example, you know, maybe taking, you know, the face of a cuttlefish and adding the the back shark body, and we create a new um, a new character. And then the you know another one which is more more of what I like in painting is creating these scenes that tell a story. So I don't know if you can see this, but there's this boy on an island. He's surrounded by sharks. Um, maybe this boat is leaving and this other one's coming in. And it's kind of this idea of, you know, where one door closes, another one opens. Um, and so there's these sto storytelling elements to my work. Most of my ideas come from a couple different areas. They are, are based in an emotion that maybe I'm dealing with at the time, or maybe something I've heard in a song or read in a book, um, or maybe somebody said something and I was like, oh man, that there's, there's an image there, there's something there. And so I'll be struck with something that I feel I, I, I should put a story to, I should put it out there. And so, for example, the, you know, one door closes and another, another one opens. I'm not going to use the doors in the image, so how do I create, you know, a metaphor in, in imagery with that? Um, when working that way, it, in, in storytelling, it's almost like creating a film. There's a lot of elements that go into, into creating this, this image, and so sometimes I have to think, you know, what am I trying to tell? What is this, what is the story that I'm going to be telling? Um, my art is usually based in two different arenas. It's, I do a lot of stuff on, on loss, love and love and loss, um, and loneliness and isolation. Those are some big elements of mine. And then the other ones are wonderment, um, seeing the world through the eyes of a child. Um, and I try and take stuff that is like maybe a stronger sense of, of emotion and put it into a more lighthearted um, scenario. Um, and especially, you know, it's funny because when you're around uh, certain people, they look at that cartoon element as, you know, childish or, you know, maybe something that is mildly unrelatable to them. And you know that there's like, they're losing touch with some of the youthfulness of themselves because at this point in history, there's very few of us that have grown up without Disney um, being a part of our lives and a major parts of our youth. Um, and so for me, I tend to use a lot of that, the cartoon imagery because after you know raising children, um, there's a lightness to that. And so, you know, when, when I would go see movies with my kids, let's say like these Pixar films or these dream work films, there's a lightness to these films, despite the fact that they're dealing with, you know, pretty, pretty intense subject matter in certain cases. I mean, you look at the movie up, for example, and this man loses the love of his life after, you know, 60 years of being together what however long they've been together and then he goes on this journey to deal with this loss it's a it's an intense concept when you think about it but you put in these elements like Doug and you know this bird and this little boy who's you know cute and endearing and you soften the blow of something that people deal with um, and that's a big that's a big part of the type of art that I, I really enjoy creating the most. I like to create stuff personally that is t 
taking emotions that we deal with on a level of, of loss or hardships and putting them into these elements of um, lightheartedness where they become digestible. Um, but at the same time, they deal with stuff that we all deal with. There's also this element of wonderment that I like to put into my work because I think, especially the older I get, the more I realize how, how jaded we become as adults. And we start to lose this, um, this part of us that sees things new for the first time. And one of the things I love um, about kids or being around kids is that there's this sense of wonderment from the smallest things. It could be a cardboard box and to them it is a, a house or a train, you know, and it's just a cardboard box. Uh, and as adults, we look at it and it's, it's a cardboard box, it's a cardboard box. And then, you know, a kid will pick it up and it is a, it's a world. For them, it's a new world. Um, I find that fascinating and I find it almost depressing that as adults we lose sight of that. And so when I'm thinking about creating this art, I try and, and go into those, um, into those places. Like it's not just, you know, maybe you go for a hike in the woods and it's just a hike for you. But for a kid, it's an adventure. You know, it's, there's, you know concepts like Robin Hood out there or these pirates or, you know, whatever these might be that you create these like fantasy worlds. And, you know, when I, I remember being a kid and I would go, I would go into the woods and I thought I was a ninja. Like, um, nowadays it, it's ridiculous to think that, but there's that, that element of wonderment there that I still like to capture. Um, and I still want to put into my art for me. Okay, so one of my favorite all-time movies is um, is Goonies. It'll always, <laughs> you know, a lot of people my age would be Star Wars, but for me it was Goonies, and mostly for the a couple of reasons, I guess. But if you look at the movie, it's a hard. These kids are about to face this hardship. They're they're about to lose everything they've ever known and be displaced from the place they grew up in. Um, and it's something, you know, if you've ever moved around um, as a child or whatever, you can, you know, it's relatable. There's this fear that goes into having to leave what you know and go into something new. Then not only are they dealing with that, but along the way on this adventure, they have to, you know, um, deal with these bad guys that are chasing them. And they deal with um, the pitfalls of this adventure um, and the dangers involved. But as they go through, you can see these moments of like awe and wonder um, as they, you know, as they find this fountain or when they first see this pirate ship. And there's these moments, these like little click moments of like, of wonderment. Um, and that's what I think makes, you know, for a great s story um, in, in regards to the type of stuff I do is you're taking, taking bad elements and you're adding light to them. So yeah, they're a little dark. They're a little um, dark to deal with, but you're bringing light into them and you're softening it. And you're, you're saying, yeah, this happens. This is a reality. And, but it's something that we don't have to, uh, take so darkly, I guess. Um, that there's this, um, maybe this innocence that can help us cope with it. And so when I'm creating these stories, that's, that's a lot of the stuff that kind of goes into it is that I'm taking these things that might be a little bit darker, um, situations and I'm trying to soften them a little. Um, because especially nowadays, man, we are just hit nonstop with darkness, darkness, darkness. And so there's gotta be like a little sense of wonderment or fun brought into it. So, so that's a lot of the, the stuff. Then there's the other elements in storytelling that have to happen, um, such as atmosphere, creating the mood to the piece, um, creating the, the staging, the set design, creating the costuming, 
um, what, is, what are they wearing to, in this scene? What's going to help tell the story better? The camera angles with which these are shot at or, you know, uh, drawn at. If I'm, you know, looking down on something, is it going to look more meek? If I'm looking up at it, is it going to look, you know, more uh, dominating um, in the image or stronger? And so these are little elements that, that kind of, that I have to think about when creating it. So it's this process. So first I have this idea, um, you know, like, like, like I said, let's say it's this kid on this island and, you know, he's all alone and feeling isolated. That's the first element. Okay, so how do I add to the tension? Well, the sharks are going to add to the tension because now he's almost trapped there. Um, if he steps into that water, you know, what's going to happen? Then we have the ship leaving and we can get the sense that the boy's watching it go and the sadness that's involved with that. And behind him, there's another ship coming into the light and it'll be coming out of the darkness and into the light. And it's something that, although unseen to him, it is a... Um, there's a, there's a there's an escape there's an out um in some of my other nautical scenes it shows up as a lighthouse um and in this one it's going to be a new boat coming for the rescue um so there's these elements and then what the kid's wearing his clothes are they going to be you know is he going to be wearing brand new clothes because he just arrived or are they tattered because he's been sitting on this island forever um is his skin going to be more brown because it's been hot on this island and he's sunbaked um, as opposed to being this, you know, white skinned albino child on this island. There's these different elements that you have to take into place that are going to create, um, the story. This is an island. It's, it's in the middle of this ocean. The boy's going to be, you know, maybe a little bit darker. If I was doing something where it was this colder scene, um, the boy's, you know, been living in a cave forever. His skin's going to be, um, a different, different, um, you know, different lightness to it because it hasn't seen sun. Um, the outfit would be different. The scene is going to be different. The settings are all different. And so each one of these little elements goes into creating this one image. And then what you're trying to do is make sure that all of it, when combined, helps people not just relate the emotion that was there, but tells tells a whole story so that you know what you're seeing like oh I or even if you don't know the story I'm putting to it you've kind of created one there's enough elements there that you can put it put together in your own head to create your own story um, which I find interesting because sometimes when people look at pieces of mine and I can over, you know I hear what them describe it they're almost taking stuff I think that they um, have and, and it's letting them be creative for a minute and the, and although it's not maybe the message I was putting out there, it's neat because it's letting them have the opportunity to be creative inside the, within themselves. Um, and I'm not sure people even realize that they are being creative because sometimes that's a, you know, it's a common thing for people to say, I wish I was creative. I wish I was creative. And I think we all are in our own ways. We just don't take the time to, to, um, develop it. But those are usually my approaches to to the concepts of where, where these paintings come from. Um, it's, it's genuinely a lot of storytelling and a lot of different elements. Um, and from here in the next thing, I'll kind of start talking about, um, concept drawing, um, and putting together thumbnails for the process of figuring out the best way to tell the story. Um, thank you for joining me today and I look forward to sharing more with you later. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, the address will be at the bottom.